Welcome to Inox Engineering, I'm Alan. In today's video we continue making the rotary brooch from Hemingway and we start by making the spindle. Now last week I made the body and it was due to go onto the milling machine but the instructions say to make the spindle next before you do the milling so you can take some sizes off the body and make the spindle to suit. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. Let's have a recap of where we've got to at the moment. In the first video we made the locking ring. In the second video we made the shank. And in the last video we started to make the body. Now I was going to continue with this in this video, but looking at the instructions they suggest that we now start to make the spindle as we need to calculate some length from the body. This is a spindle for the rotary brooch and it's sized to hold this further out in the chuck so you can turn from this way in and from the chuck side out to form a centerpiece. Now I've got a problem is that it's only holding on the very end of this bar. I'm not too happy about turning from the chuck outwards because I haven't got much room to get the tool in. So what I will do is drill it and centre it and machine the outside between centres and then I know that all the outside is running through. So that's the one end, we'll just turn it round now and just centre drill this end. Each end of a centre drill hole, centre to line up on. So now I'll change the chuck for a centre. When I turn this bar round in the chuck and centre drill, I found that the hole, the four millimetre hole, was running out. So what I've done is just drill five millimetres to true it up, and then I've recentered on the end. So that's why there's an extra bore in there. Um, this part will be machined out to 8mm I think it is so that won't affect it so what I have is a centre that's running through to that hole and a centre that's running through to that hole I've set up 
centering the headstock and a revolving centre in the tailstock. This is the driving pin here and that fits into this slot so that goes into there and that holds it on the end. Now the beauty of doing it this way is I can take this out as many times as I like to check sizes, to check fits and it will still run true between sensors. And then when I come to do the back end instead of struggling to get in between the chuck with the tool and the facer I'm doing all I do is turn it round the driving dog on this side turn the whole job round put it back between centres and I can machine this side as normal now I was asked about these where did I get this driving dog from this one is in a set and the set goes from that size up to this size about an inch and a half and they were made really for a grinding machine they came with a grinding machine I used to use and uh, when the company closed down the machines were just being scrapped off and all the parts that went with it were being thrown in the scrap bin so I said can I have that and they said yes so I had a set of carriers which I use on the lathe. Let's put this between centres. I don't need to oil these centres because they're not moving. This one stays with the part. As the part rotates, the centre is fixed with the part. And this one is a rotating centre, so there's no friction on the inside of the centre. This is called a live centre because it's actually moving. If you put a dead centre in, that is a centre like that, which is just a Morse taper with a centre on. If you put a dead centre in, then you'd have to lubricate the end here to make sure it doesn't overheat. Now the whole part is only 30 mil long, which is nearly there. I'm just watching that my driving dog's not going to hit my tool post. I've changed my tool to a high speed steel tool, um, mainly because the tool is getting too wide to go in the gap again so with this tool I can get right down to the face That will, it's a tight, tight fit, but it will slide up there. So I'm not going to take any more off on the lathe. I can always use some emery cloth if I need to. Okay, I've turned it round in the lathe. Put another driving dog on this. It's a different size because it's only 10mm diameter now. 
and I need to turn this down See here I had a problem with the turning. I couldn't figure it out at first. The traverse was on and the, the it was going along that way and then all of a sudden it started to go into the job as well. And I thought well, what the what what's going on? I've never had both well you can't have both traverse working at the same time. And what it was, got the tool post here there's the plunger that holds the, the tool in and what happened it got caught behind the revolving centre and then started to turn the tool post as it was coming along because this wasn't moving this was holding it still and cut into the job well luckily this is all scrap here anyway it's only about 15 mil I need from here to the end so I'm going to cut this off but I didn't want to do it yet because obviously I'm still working luckily it's still held on if it had got another half a mil deeper I think it would have just parted it off so I've never had that happen before so it's something to bear in mind in the future if the plunger here is coming along and catches the back of the revolving centre one way of preventing it is just turn the, the lever in so it's pulled the plunger in. Anyway, I think that's finished on that side. The bearing should fit on there. Okay, so I've just tried the bearing. You can see it goes on to about there. And the difference in size between there and the end is about half a thou. So I'm going to leave it at that. As this left this bearing goes up to that face. I've just faced the width of this off. So to calculate the width of the spindle in the middle we need to put the thrust bearing in the bottom of the body and measure from the top of the thrust bearing to the top of the body. Then put the radial bearing in and measure from the top of the radial bearing to the top of the body. Then take the thickness of the bearing, add it to the height that we've just measured and take that away from the first reading from the, the thrust bearing to the top and it should give you the width of this and that's what we have to machine on the middle of the spindle which is that calculated width less a couple of thou okay that's as far as I can go between centers just finish the thickness of this
I'm using a piece of silver steel that came with the kit as a gauge and all I've done is ground a slight bevel on the edge because it was sharp that's that so this part's now finished except for a hole going through the side and cutting off to length And here we have the completed spindle with the M4 grub screw fitted. Oh well, that's it for today. Hope that was interesting. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering. <laughs>